Hello my dear friends, today I want to discuss an essay, The Literature of Exertion by John Simmons Bart, who is popularly known as John Bart. Now this essay was for the first time published in the Atlantic Review in 1967. Later on it was included in his book, The Friday Book, Essays and Other Non-Fiction. Now in this essay, John Bart advocates certain experiments in literature, particularly in fiction, for which he became very very controversial. Later on, many literary scholars hate this essay as the manifesto of postmodern literature. Now, in the very opening paragraph of the essay, John Bart makes it clear that he wants to discuss three things. Number one, intermedia arts. Number two is appreciation of the Argentine author Jorge Luis Borges. And number three, the literature of exhausted possibility or in general terms, the literature of exhaustion. Let me come to the word exhaustion. In general uses, the word exhaustion refers to the state of extreme tiredness. When I say I am exhausted, I mean I am extremely tired either physically or morally or intellectually. Now, in this essay, the word has altogether different connotation. It refers to the used upness of certain forms. I repeat, in this essay, the word exhaustion refers to the used upness of certain forms. Now, before I come to the point of intermediate art, let me talk about novel. And when we think of novel very seriously, then we have to go back to the date of publication of Don Quixote in the 17th century. It was written by Thervantes, and this novel has a special significance in this essay, we will realize later. Now, this novel is regarded as the father of all novels for a simple reason it contains each and every type of novel this novel can be subjected to you know multiple interpretations it can be looked at as an allegorical novel it can be looked at as a romance it can be looked at as you know a picaresque novel likewise the novel can be subjected to multiple interpretations now since the publication of Don Quixote in the 17th century novel has come a very very long way and among all the literary branches it is the novel that enjoys huge readership though some prominent writers like V.S. Naipaul or Milan Kundera predicted the date of novel but the novel refuses to die in fact the novel is flourishing nevertheless if we talk of a new novel, generally we talk of the novel that has a new plot, that has a new setting. Herein lies the importance of this essay. Now in this essay, John Bart is trying to talk about those fiction which are thematically and technically different from modern novel or the conventional novel. And as an, as an example, he talks of a piece of fiction by Jorge Luis Borges that is Pierre Manor, author of the Quixote. Now, first of all, let me talk about you know the story in a very brief way. Now, Pierre Manor, author of the Quixote. Quixote refers to Don Quixote. Don Quixote was written by Arventis. But in this story, Pierre Menard is the author of Quixote. Now in the beginning of the story, the narrator gives an introduction about Pierre Menard, who is an author. Then he gives the list of his works and then he deals with the process of Pierre Menard's reading Don Quixote. In a course of his reading Don Quixote, he is so much engrossed, he is so much immersed that he starts recreating it. Now, this, this is a short story and in this short story, one of the elements is Don Quixote. Nevertheless, Don Quixote is not the main subject. The main subject is the process of reading and the difficulty in production. Now, we can see that this story is entirely different from conventional story, thematically and technically. Now, let me talk about intermedia art. Dick Higgins coined the term intermedia art to describe various interdisciplinary art activities such as 
between painting and poetry or between painting and theater. Let me repeat it. Dick Higgins coined a term intermedia to describe various interdisciplinary art activities such as between poetry and painting or between painting and theater. Dick Higgins was a Fluxus artist. Fluxus was an avant-garde art movement. Dick Higgins played a very significant role in the intermedia movement. He founded Something Else Phrase and published some of the intermediate text or artwork. For example, Robert Filio's Ample Foot for Stupid Talk, Ray Johnson's The Paper Snake, Daniel Sporis Anecdotal Typography. Now we need to understand the very nature of intermedia art. Now these three works defy classification. They cannot be categorized into a particular form. The very nature of intermedia art gave the artist a free space to work in and it was not available to the modernist writer. In intermedia art, there is the tendency to eliminate the notion of omniscient author or the notion of passive readership that the author is the controlling agent and the readers have to digest everything given to them by the controlling agent called the author. Now, this intermediate art gave the readers a freedom. Now, Pierre Maynard, author of the Quixote of Borges, can be regarded as an intermediate text. Because this story can be read in various levels. We can read the story as a piece of literary criticism. We can read the story as a metafiction. We can read the story as an intertext. And finally, we can read the story as a fiction which is altogether different from conventional fiction, both thematically and technically. Now, through the analysis of this story, John Barth tries to draw our attention to certain notions, such as the notion of creativity, the notion of intellectual property right, the notion of imagination, the notion of authorship. Now, as I told you in the beginning, that P.R. Maynard, author of the Quixote, Don Quixote is used as an element, but it is not about Don Quixote. It is about the process of reading and also the process of production. That means, if I want to write a new fiction, I don't have to create new material for it. I can use the already available material, but it all depends on how I use it. In this regard, William Shakespeare can be a very good example because he did not invent the plots for his plays except two or three. For his plot, he borrowed from different sources. For example, Hamlet. There was already, already the story of Hamlet, but it was a still story. But in the hands of William Shakespeare, it has become a timeless classic. Now, if I am trying to write a novel, but I am unable to create new material for it, I am facing difficulties. Now the very process of writing a novel can also be the subject of a novel. And that's what, through the analysis of this story, John Bard has shown. And in the process, it becomes a new form of art, a new work of art. That means this, I mean stories like this, revives literature from exertion by walking the path of exertion. So, writers like 
he, he also talks about some other writers. For example, he talks of Kafka, Vladimir Nabokov, James Joyce, Samuel Beckett, and particularly he praises Beckett and Borjas. They were the innovators in the age of felt ultimacy. They did not exemplify them, rather they employed them. They turned exhaustion into production. That means if an artist is endowed with creative power, tremendous expertise, he can make anything the subject of his fiction, but it all depends on how he uses them. John Barr categorizes the artist or the writers into three separate groups. Number one, technically old-fashioned writers or artists, technically up-to-date non-artist or writers. Number three, technically up-to-date artists. The writers or the artists who fall into the first category, they adhere to the conventional form. They will, you know, they may belong to the present age, but they will still adhere to the narrative technique of either Tolstoy or Dostoevsky or Balja. They don't want to become inventive. Now, if you want to become inventive, you take a risk. Either you will be forgotten or you will be badly criticized or you will become instantly popular or you will become gradually popular. Now in this regard, the metaphysical poets serve a very good example. They were badly criticized. They were ignored for some centuries. But T.S. Eliot wrote the essay, the metaphysical poem, and revived interest in them. And John Donne has become an iconic figure. The modern poets still take inspiration from him. Now, John Donne has got this iconic status for a simple reason because the metaphysical poets under his leadership were inventive. But the writers or the artists who belong to the first category are either not capable of creating something new or they don't want to take the risk. And the writers or the artists are regarded as non-artists who fall into the second category for a simple reason, because they ignore the past. An artist can't afford to ignore the past. He has to learn from the past. He has to acknowledge the past. But the writers or the artists who belong to the third category, that is technically up to the artist, they are thoroughly aware of the tradition. If he wants to write a novel, he definitely has the sense of the tradition of novel writing since the time of Tarventis. And the writers or the artists who fall into this category are Kafka, Nabokov, Joyce, Beckett, and particularly Borges. Now here in this essay, John Barth deals with Borges' writing in detail just to draw our attention to certain notions and after reading this essay we understand them better that creating new material is not the only part of your creativity you can use the already available material in a new direction in a new style in a new technique Therein lies your creativity. So our concept of creativity is broadened. And imagination does not refer to creating something original. For example, William Shakespeare, in his hands Hamlet has become a timeless classic. The story was already there. Now it is because of his imagination that Hamlet has become a timeless classic. Therefore. The analyze, I mean, John Barth's analysis of the story Pierre Manor, the author of Quixote, takes us to the different realm of imagination. Therefore, 
when we, you know, having read the essay, we realize that we now understand literature better. It broadens our perspective and it makes our understanding of literature better. Now, John Barr also wrote another essay, The Literature of Replenishment, as a sequel to this essay. And both the essays deal with the postmodern literature. Now, John Barr himself was a novelist. Even he tried to do experiments. He was definitely unconventional. And in this essay, you know, indirectly he has declared himself to be the disciple of Warhas. But he is not so much remembered for his novels as he is remembered for his essays. And particularly, this essay is very much successful in that it has drawn the attention of the reading public towards the new dimension of literature in terms of thematic concerns, in terms of technicality, which is known as postmodern literature and this essay can truly be regarded as the manifesto of postmodern literature. In my next class, I shall try to talk about postmodern literature in detail. Thank you so much. Have a very, very nice day.